So hi all, as uh, you've been told, I'm Kat. I use she, her, her pronouns. And today I'll be talking to you about my project on colobacillus and laying hens. So let's start with the disease. So avian pathogenic E. coli causes colobacillosis in laying hens. It's a disease marked by inflammation of various soft tissues, as well as organ, uh, organ lesion formation on major organs like the liver. And it can also lead to uh, septicemia in acute cases. Um, given the extent of its impact on the egg and poultry industries, it has a significant impact on the Canadian economy, and it's primarily composed of O1, O2, and O78 serogroups, though there are some less common ones that I'm not mentioning here. It's thought that as battery cages are phased out in favor of more open housing systems, that the incidence of this disease will only increase over time. So that's where we come in. So we're working on bacteria phages or phages based strategies uh, for the treatment of APEC and laying hens. So phages are just viruses of bacteria that can attach to a host bacterial cell, propagate within it, and then burst open the cell at the end of their life cycle, uh, releasing progeny phage and propagating the infection. Um, generally where you find a bacteria in an environment, you'll also find a phage targeting said bacterium, so they're readily isolatable, and they can co-evolve with their host. Um, the efficacy of bacteriophages has been demonstrated for uh, a peck infection in broiler chickens and turkeys, though the literature is a bit more sparse when it concerns laying hen treatment, so that's what we're focusing on. So we had one major hypothesis going into this, if novel phages are effective in controlling APEC infection, then the administration of these phages to laying hens experimentally infected with these pathogenic APEC strains should reduce the morbidity and mortality rates, which is a mouthful. Uh, we have two major objectives for to test this hypothesis, the first of which we've already done. Um, we aimed to isolate and characterize novel anti-APEC phages in vitro by their host range, ability to kill each given host, um, their genome content, as well as their actual viral structure. And then uh, one day when the pandemic ends, we plan to utilize these phages in an in vivo model to see if they can improve, so they can improve uh, disease outcomes in laying hens infected with APEC. Um, overall, we've found about 28 different phages, both from hen feces and from sewage water samples, 11 of which target O78 serogroup APEC, the most commonly observed in Canada. Um, and we, I, we chose seven of these phages for further characterization based on their ability to propagate in vitro. Um, so each of the phages that we isolated, you can see from this heat map here where green shows high um, susceptibility of an apex strain to phage. We found that each of these phages had strong activity against at least one tested apex strain, with the three rightmost phages, SW1 through 6VE1, showing the greatest promise given that they have high activity against um, all the O78 strains tested, which is the most common, um, commonly observed in Canada. So we plan to use these three phages for a cocktail strategy for treating APEC in our in vivo model. We subject these seven phages to transmission electron microscopy, though as you can see from these three figures, that didn't work out terribly well. Only three of them actually showed up in our micrographs, so we plan to redo this. Um, a and B here show two phages of the Myoviridae family, which means that they have um, long contractile tails, as you can kind of see underneath that kind of dice looking structure. And then C here is a member of the Cifoviridae, which means that it just has a long non-contractile tail. Um, in our future studies, we're going to be utilizing a series of steps for our in vivo model. The first of which we're just going to challenge our birds by an air sac inoculation model with our apex strains to make sure they are infective. And then once we've determined that that's true, we plan to utilize phage to in a intramuscular injection injection strategies to see if phages can improve disease outcomes. Step three is we want to inoculate the birds litter with our apex strains to see if we can challenge them by a more indirect model. And then step four is to apply phages to drinking water and also to the litter to treat these birds which have been seeded with apex in their litter. Um, I'd like to thank all of our funding agencies my committee and everybody responsible for sample collection and arrangement. And I would be remiss if I did not mention every single undergrad student that has saved my, uh, saved my bacon more than once. Uh, this is my literature cited and any questions? Thank you, Kat. Uh, just waiting for questions. As always, as a reminder to everybody, if you uh, have questions while the presenter is speaking, you can type them in right then and there. Um, oh, and I see we had one come in. 
what sort of concentrations of Bage would you need to actually treat clinical disease? Um, Apparently they're doing construction or something. Uh, so it depends on the inoculation route. So I've noticed that for a lot of uh, intramuscular injection strategies or ones where they're like directly applied to the bird in some other really invasive way, it's about 10 to the four to 10 to the six plaque forming units per mil, which is the infectious dose of a phage. But if you're doing something like a phage spray to the environment or you're including it in water, you want more along the lines of 10 to the seven to 10 to the nine plaque forming units per mil. Okay, Gage. Good. Here's another one. Um, do you plan to compare with the traditional antibiotic therapeutic approach? Um, sorry, would you mind repeating that? Sure, I'll do a little slower. <laughs> no, it's to... just that they're doing construction outside at a very terrible time. Oh, there. yeah. <laughs> uh, do you plan to compare with the traditional antibiotic therapeutic approach? Um, so not in our given study. So when we do challenge our fate with our phages, we're not going to use antibiotics as like a comparison primarily because that would require a lot more birds and we don't really have the necessary manpower, especially in the wake of COVID, unfortunately. And then just, I, we could, we plan to compare the results that we get with some of our, or some of like the antibiotics trials that have been used before in laying hens, but the literature for that is kind of, all over the place in terms of consistency, so. Okay. Um, are you expecting to see development of resistance to the bacterial phages and how fast? Um, absolutely, for individual phages. So if we used just one of the phages, I would expect very rapid onset of resistance just because phage resistance is very common. But by utilizing three or four different phages in a uh, phage cocktail, um, we think that that will reduce resistance incidence enough that it won't actually matter for clinical outcomes because, yeah, that is a big problem for this type of strategy. Okay. Do you think bacteriophages will be as useful to low-income producers who tend to have weaker biosecurity systems as they are to intensive producers? Sorry, what was that last little bit of that sentence? Um, do you think that it would be as useful to low-income producers who tend to have weaker biosecurity systems as they are to intensive producers? So will they I think, be I think they're thinking, you know, possibly we've heard a lot about backyard flock, so um, something like that versus a, a commercial it, setting. It, it might be more difficult for the biosecurity side just because these are living organisms and they are subject to a lot of regulations and controls. So if you can't maintain them in that environment and there's a risk of them spreading to neighboring areas, there's a pretty good chance that that might not be useful to backyard, uh, backyard poultry managers just because it is technically a living organism, so. Okay, and um, are you expecting to see development of resistance to the bacterial phages and how fast? Didn't I answer that one? Okay. Uh, I think so. Uh, yes, we do plan to see resistance, but not when we use multiple phages together, because that should offset it in the same way that when you use multiple antibiotics together, there's less chance of resistance popping up in any given antibiotic. 